Today on MTG Unpacked, we're getting stuck into the new Commander Legends Dungeons & Dragons Battle for Baldur's Gate Commander deck, Party Time. So this is a white-black deck. The commander here is Nalia de Anis. And let's check it out. So this is very much based around the party mechanic. So you get a Collector Booster Sample Pack, 100 card deck. Uh, we've got 10 new cards here, deck box, 10 double-sided tokens, foil etch, display, commander, life, foil, strategy, insert, and reference card. So let's get into it. So we've got the pull tab on the bottom. Uh, these decks are going for about 45 to 50 US, and uh, a bit pricier than the ones for Commander Legends 1, which you can still find for about 20 bucks. So we've got some punch-outs here. And here is the deck box itself. And usually, yeah, I'm going to say this would have enough room for a fully sleeved deck. You just got to remove the divider. Okay, so we've got a flyer. We'll take a look at that in a second. The deck itself, a sample pack, interesting. And the life wheel here. So this one only goes up to 40 yeah so we're counting down on the other side so that is not terribly useful in my opinion uh, but let's see what we got here collector booster sample pack so these are a bit of a cheat you only get a couple of cards but you know a little extra bonus all right so this looks like an ad card yep and what are the two random cards so we've got to Baldur's gate so that's the extended art version. And Ganax Astral Hunter. So a foil. Okay, so nothing too crazy there. Don't get your hopes up for any crazy pulls. And then let's see what we've got here. So this is the Flyer Party Time. Playing the deck. So you want to try to build your party. And we'll get into more detail about that when we get into the deck. We've got commander rules here in case you're new to the format. And on the other side, some lore about Nalia de Anis. So you can check that out. So let's get stuck into it. So of the four decks we'll be opening in the next couple of days, this one has the most financial value. So it's roughly double the uh, value of the box itself, but that will come down as people crack them open. So let's get to the lands here. We'll take a look at that stuff later, lands and tokens, okay. So we do have a foil etched display commander. So this thing is a thicker than usual uh, piece of cardstock. And this takes the place of the oversized commanders they used to have. So then let's look at our regular size one here. So we have Nalia de Anis. So it's a mythic, legendary creature, human rogue, 3-3 three, three for 3. You may look at the top card of your library anytime. You may cast cleric, rogue, warrior and wizard spells from the top of your library. And at the beginning of combat on your turn, if you have a full party... Put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control and those creatures gain death touch until end of turn. So you do have an advantage there if you are able to build a party. Next up we've got another commander here. It's another mythic. Burakos party leader. Legendary creature orc 2-4 for 4. So it's also a cleric, rogue, warrior and wizard. Okay. Whenever it attacks, defending player loses X life and you create X treasure tokens where X is the number of creatures in your party. And you can choose a background, so that's something new in this set. Uh, you can have a background as a second commander. <clears throat> so here we've got a, another mythic folk hero, so legendary enchantment background. So this is for two mana commander creatures you own. Have whenever you cast a spell that shares a creature type with this creature, draw a card. This ability triggers only once each turn. So that's nice to have that as well. Arcane Signet, you'll see this in a lot of commander decks. Artifact for two, tap to add one mana of any color in your commander's color identity. Command Tower, land, tap to add one mana of any color in your commander's color identity. That's another common one. 
Haven Mind Sensor. Creature Bird Wizard 2 1 for 3 with Flash and Flying. If an opponent would search a library, that player searches the top 4 cards of that library instead. Okay, Crib Swap, Tribal Instant Shapeshifter. So it has Changeling. This card is every creature type. So this is uh, one of the cards that helps you get your full party. Exile Target Creature, its controller creates a 1 1 colorless shapeshifter creature token with Changeling. And that one's 3 mana. A regular cohort, another shapeshifter here, 2-2 two, two for 4. So when it enters the battlefield, create a 2-2 two, two colorless shapeshift creature token with Changeling. So it seems like they're really leaning on these shapeshifter abilities. We've got Mage's Attendant, Creature Cat Rogue, 3-2 three, for 3. When it enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one blue wizard creature token with Pay 1, sack this creature, counter target non-creature spell unless its controller pays 1. So you've got your Rogue, you'll get a wizard out of that. Mother of Runes, Creature Human Cleric, 1-1 one, one for a single white, tap target creature, you gain, you control gains protection from the colour of your choice until end of turn. So another party member here. Another Cleric, Priest of Ancient Law, Creature Dwarf Cleric, 2143. when it enters the battlefield, you gain 1 life and draw a card. <clears throat> and here we have a Wizard, Rumor Gatherer, Creature Elf Wizard, 2-1 for 3, has Alliance. Never another creature enters the battlefield under your control. Scry one. If this is the second time this ability has re resolved this turn, draw a card instead. And another shapeshifter, Valiant Changeling, 3-3 three, three for 7. This spell costs one less to cast for each creature type among creatures you control. This effect can't reduce the amount of mana this spell costs by more than 5. Has Changeling, of course, and Double Strike. Another shapeshifter. 1-1 one, one for a single black changeling outcast. It can't block and can't be blocked. Corpse Augur, creature zombie wizard, 4-2 four, for 4. So when it dies, you draw X cards and you lose X life, where X is the number of creature cards in target player's graveyard. So that could be any player on the uh, in the game. We have Malakir, Blood Priest. Creature Vampire Cleric 2 1 for 2. So when it enters the battlefield, each opponent loses X life and you gain X life, where X is the number of creatures in your party. So, like we said before, the party consists of a cleric, rogue, warrior, and wizard. Thwart the Grave. Sorcery for 6. This spell costs 1 less to cast for each creature in your party. Return target creature card and up to 1 target cleric, rogue, warrior, or wizard creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Zulaport Cutthroat Creature, Human Rogue Ally, 1-1 one, one for 2. So whenever it or another creature you control dies, each opponent loses 1 life and you gain 1 life. We've got D-Spark, Instant for 2, Exile Target Permanent with Mana Value 4 or Greater. So some removal there, Orzov Signet, Artifact for 2, Pay 1, Tap, you get to add white and black mana. Skull Clamp, this is a uh, pretty common command card, Artifact Equipment for 1. Equip creature gets plus one minus one, and whenever a equip creature dies, draw two cards, you can equip it for one. Soul Ring, yes, pretty much every commander deck these days has this artifact for one. Tap to add two colorless. Talisman of Hierarchy artifact for two, tap to add colorless, or tap to add white or black. Talisman of Hierarchy deals one damage to you. And Ash Barons, that's a land. Tap for colorless has basic land cycling one. So you pay that, discard this card, you get to search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. But Juka Bolga, land enters the battlefield, tapped when it enters the battlefield, that's our target player's graveyard. Tap for black mana, Mortuary Maya, okay, so we've got some lands chucked in the middle here. Enters the battlefield, tapped when it enters the battlefield, you may put target creature card from your graveyard on top of your library, tap for black. And Myriad Landscape enters the battlefield, tapped, tap for colorless for two, tap, sack it, search your library for up to two basic land cards that share a land type, put them onto the battlefield, tap, then shuffle. And Ors of Basilica, yet another tap land. When it enters the battlefield, return a land you control to its owner's hand, tap for white and black. Path of Ancestry, another one enters tapped. Tap to add one mana of any colour in your commander's colour identity, and when that mana is spent to cast a creature spell that shares a creature type with your commander, scry one. And Snowfield Sinkhole. Snowland Plain Swamp, so you can tap it for white or black, enters the battlefield tapped. 
And Deep Gnome Terramancer. This one's pretty cool. Creature Gnome Wizard. 2-2 two, two for 2 has Flash and Mold Earth. Whenever one or more lands enters the battlefield under an opponent's control without being played, you may search your library for a planes card, put it onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle. Do this only once each turn. So I think this is the new printing in this Commander deck. That's one of the more valuable cards here. And moving on to the rest of the deck, we have Harper Recruiter, Creature Human Warrior 3 1 for 3 with flying. Whenever it attacks, look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal a cleric card, a rogue card, a warrior card, and or a wizard card from among them. Put those cards into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Seasoned Dungeoneer, Creature Human Warrior 3 4 for 4. When it enters the battlefield, you take the initiative. Whenever you attack, target attacking cleric, rogue, warrior, or wizard gains protection from creatures until end of turn. It explores. So reveal the top card of your library, put that card into your hand if it's land, otherwise put a plus one plus one counter on the creature, then put the card back or put it into your graveyard. And initiative is that mechanic, it's sort of like um, Monarch, where you have the initiative, I think there's a, they might have a token, here it is. So the, we'll take a look at that token later. We got Stick Together, Sorcery for 5. Each player chooses a party from among creatures they control, then sacrifices the rest. <clears throat> Here's another nice new card here. Black Market Connections, Enchantment for 3. At the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, choose one or more. Sell Contraband, so you can create a treasure token, you lose one life. Buy information, you get to draw a card, you lose two life, or hire a mercenary. You get to create a 3-2 colour shapeshift creature token with changeling, you lose three life. So that's another one of the uh, more valuable cards in this deck. We've got Solemn Doom Guide, creature tiefling cleric 4-5 for five, for 5 with flying each creature card in your graveyard that's cleric, rogue, warrior, and or wizard has unearth for one and a black. So you pay that. Return the card to the battlefield. The creature gains haste. Exile at the beginning of the next end step. Or if it would leave the battlefield. Unearth only as a sorcery. And multi-class Baldric artifact equipment for one. Equip creature has lifelink. If you control a cleric, death touch if you control a rogue. Haste if you control a warrior. And flying if you control a wizard. As long as you have a full party, prevent all damage that will be dealt to equip creature. Equip it for two. And we've got Archpriest of Yona, Creature Human Cleric Star 2 for a single white. Its power is equal to the number of creatures in your party. And at the beginning of combat on your turn, if you have a full party, target creature gets plus one, plus one, and gains flying until end of turn. Austere Command, Sorcery for six. Choose two, destroy all artifacts, destroy all enchantments, destroy all creatures with mana value for three or less. Destroy all creatures with mana value 4 or greater. So a nice menu of options there. Bygone Bishop, Creature Spirit, Cleric 2-3 for 3 with Flying. Whenever you cast a Creature Spell with mana value 3 or less, Investigate. So that means create a clue token. It's an artifact with Pay 2, Sack this artifact, draw a card. And we've got Dusk to Dawn, Sorcery for 4, Destroy all creatures with power 3 or greater. And then the Dawn part is a sorcery for five, has Aftermath, so you cast the spell only from your graveyard, then exile it. Return all creature cards with power two or less from your graveyard to your hand. Okay, so that's pretty handy. Bounce them back, get some more value. Eight and a half tails, legendary creature flocks, flocks, fox cleric. Two, two for two, for one and white, target opponent you control gains protection from white until end of turn. Or pay one target spell or permanent becomes white until end of turn. And I believe we did a uh, Commander Snack video of this one a while back. We've got Frontline Medic, Creature Human Cleric 3-3 three, three for 3 with Battalion. Whenever Frontline Medic and at least two other creatures attack, creatures you control gain indestructible until end of turn. And if you sacrifice it, counter target spell with X in its mana cost unless its controller pays 3. Gale Powder Mage, Creature Kithkin Wizard 3-3 three, three for 4, this artwork's hilarious, uh, has flying, whenever it attacks, exile another target creature, return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. Glorious Protector, Creature Angel Cleric 3-4 for 4 with flash and flying, 
When it enters the battlefield, you may exile any number of non-angel creatures you control until Glorious Protector leaves the battlefield. Foretell for two and a white. So you're basically paying two, uh, putting it face down, and then you can cast, or you, you pay that and you can pay the two uh, for the foretell cost, actually. So this one is Giselle Goldmane, Legendary Creature Cat Warrior. It's a mythic 4-4 four, 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 four with first strike. For three and two white attacking creatures you control, get plus X, plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of attacking creatures. Magus of the Balance Creature Human Wizard 2 2 for 2. For four and white, tap, sack it. Each player chooses the number of lands they control, equal to the number of lands controlled by the player who controls the fewest, then sacrifices the rest. Players discard cards and sacrifice creatures the same way. And another mythic, Machaeus the Lunark, legendary creature, human cleric, 0, zero for X and a Y. It enters the battlefield with X, plus 1, plus 1 counters on it. And you can tap, put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on it. Or tap, remove a plus 1, plus 1 counter from it. You get to put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on each other creature you control. That's a good deal. Pump everybody up in the team. We've got Mirror Entity. Another Shapeshifter, 1-1 one, one for 3, for X, until end of turn, creatures you control have base power and toughness, uh, so that's X, slash X, and gain all creature types. Order of White Clay, creature, Kith, Kin, Cleric, 1-4 for 3, for 1 and 2 white, tap, return target creature card with mana value 3 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Selfless Spirit, creature, Spirit, Cleric, 2-1 two, for 2, with flying, if you sacrifice a creature, you control gain indestructible until end of turn. Sevens Reclamation Sorcery for 3. Return target permanent card with mana value 3 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. If this spell was cast from a graveyard, you may copy this spell and may choose a new target for the copy. And you can flash it back for 4 and a white, so that means you can uh, cast it from your graveyard for its flashback cost, then exile it. We've got Solemn Recruit, Creature Dwarf Warrior 223 with Double Strike and Revolt at the beginning of your end step. If a permanent you control left the battlefield this turn, put a plus one plus one counter on Solemn Recruit. Squad Commander, Creature Core Warrior 33 for 4. So when it enters the battlefield, create a 1 1 white core warrior creature token for each creature in your party. And at the beginning of combat on your turn, if you have a full party creatures you control, Get plus one plus zero and gain indestructible until end of turn. Unbreakable formation. Instant for three creatures you control gain indestructible until end of turn. So that's a nice combat trick. Addendum. If you cast this spell during your main phase, put a plus one plus one counter on each of those creatures and they gain vigilance until end of turn. <clears throat> Next up we have Blood Soaked Champion. Creature, Human Warrior 2-1, for a single black, it can't block, has raid for one and a black. You can return it from your graveyard to the battlefield, activate only if you attacked this turn. And Butcher of Malakir, Creature Vampire Warrior 5-4, for seven with flying. Whenever it or another creature control dies, each opponent sacrifices a creature and another mythic. I think this might be a new card as well, Calculating Lich. Creature Zombie Wizard 5-5 five, five for 6 with Menace. Whenever a creature attacks one of your opponents, that player loses one life. Another mythic. We've got Dire Fleet Ravager. Creature Orc Pirate Wizard 4-4-4-5 four, 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 with Menace and Death Touch. When it enters the battlefield, each player loses a third of their life rounded up. Whoa! That's pretty brutal. We've got Gonti Lord of Luxury. Legendary creature, Aetherborn Rogue, 2-3 for 4 with Death Touch. So when it enters the battlefield, look at the top 4 cards of target opponent's library, exile one of them face down, and put the rest on the bottom of that library in a random order. You may look at and cast that card for as long as it remains exiled, and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any type to cast that spell. Grim Haru Specs. It's a creature human wizard, 3-2 three, for 3 with Morph for a single black. You may cast this card face down as a 2-2 two, two creature for 3. Turn it face up any time for its Morph cost. Whenever another non-token creature you control dies, draw a card. And Grim Hireling, creature Tiefling Rogue, 3-2 for 4. 
Whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, create two treasure tokens. Pay a black, sacrifice X treasures, target creature gets minus X, minus X until end of turn, activate only as a sorcery. And we've got Maru Strike Leader, Creature Human Warrior 3 2 for 3. Whenever it attacks, create a 2 1 Black Warrior Creature Token, it has Dash for 3 and a Black. So you can cast a spell for its Dash cost. If you do, it gains haste and it's returned from the battlefield to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. Mind Blade Render, Creature as a Warrior 1 3 for 2. Whenever your opponents are dealt combat damage, if any of that damage were dealt by a warrior, you draw a card and you lose one life. And Nighthawk Scavenger, creature vampire rogue, one plus star, three for three, has flying, death touch, and lifelink. So its power is equal to one plus the number of card types among cards in your opponent's graveyards. Pontiff of Blight, creature zombie cleric, two, seven for six with extort. Whenever you cast a spell, you may pay white or black. If you do, each opponent loses one life and you gain that much life. Other creatures you control have extort. So if a creature has multiple instances of extort, it triggers separately. And Puppeteer Click, Creature Fairy Wizard 3, 2, for 5 with flying. When it enters the battlefield, put target creature card from an opponent's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. It gains haste at the beginning of your next end step, exile it. And it also has persist. So when this creature dies, if it had no minus one, minus one canters on it, return it to battlefield under its owner's control with a minus one, minus one canter on it. And another mythic. I think this one's from Strixhaven. Felisa Fang of Silver Quill. Legendary creature vampire wizard. Three, two for four with flying and mentor. Whenever this creature attacks, put a plus one, plus one counter on target attacking creature with lesser power. And whenever a non-token creature you control dies, if it had counters on it, create X tapped 2-1 white and black inkling creature tokens with flying, where X is the number of counters it had on it. And Furia's Retribution, so this is an enchantment saga. On the first turn, uh, as it enters, create a 4-4 white angel warrior creature token with flying and vigilance. On the second turn, until end of turn, and as you control gain, tap, destroy target creature with power less than this creature's power. And on the third turn, angels you control gain, double strike until end of turn. And High Priest of Penance, creature human cleric, 1-1 one, one for 2. Whenever it's dealt damage, you may destroy target non-land permanent. And Maskwood Nexus, this one's actually pretty handy in this deck. It's an artifact for 4. Creatures you control are every creature type. So if you have four creatures on the battlefield, you will have a complete party. The same is true for creature spells you control and creature cards you own that aren't on the battlefield. For three, tap, create a 2-2 two, two blue shapeshift creature token with changeling. Okay, so that is the bulk of the deck. Now we're going to take a look at the tokens and the mana base. So let's see here. The... Um, Tokens, this is the initiative I was talking about earlier. So whenever one or more creatures the player controls deals combat damage to you, that player takes the initiative. Whenever you take the initiative, and at the beginning of your upkeep, venture into Undercity. So if you're in a dungeon, advance to the next room. If you're not, enter Undercity. You can take the initiative even if you already have it. And on the other side, we have Undercity, which is the dungeon that you're venturing into. And we've got a shapeshifter token here, 1-1 one, one with changeling. On the other side, a clue token. And another shapeshifter. So this is a 3-2 this time. Okay, so we want a different type of shapeshifter. We've got a 2-2 two, two shapeshifter. Another 3-2. Two, and 2-2. Two, two. Core warrior, 1-1. One, one. And shapeshifter, 2-2. Two, two. Okay, lots of those. Core warrior, 1-1. One, one. And an Angel Warrior 4-4 four, four with Flying and Vigilance. Another Core Warrior 1-1. One, one. And Wizard 1-1. One, one. And it has this ability, Pay 1, Sack it, Counter Target, non creature Spell. Unless its controller pays 1. Another Core Warrior with Treasure on the other side. A Warrior 2-1 with an Inkling. Flying 2-1. Another Warrior and Inkling. And Parts of the Turn... 
popular magic formats. What is your favorite magic format? Leave a note in the comments. Now we'll take a look at the mana base here. We have Castle Lock Thwain, it's the land. Enters battlefield tapped unless you control a swamp. Tap for black for one and two black. Tap, draw a card, then you lose life equal to the number of cards in your hand. Mutavolt, this one's pretty decent. Land, tap for colors, pay one. And it becomes a 2-2 creature with all creature types until end of turn, it's still a land. So another way to beef up your party. Shambling Vent, enters battlefield tapped. Tap for white or black, for one white and black. It becomes a 2-3 white and black elemental creature with lifelink. Until end of turn, it's still a land. Temple of Silence. Enters battlefield tapped. When it enters battlefield, scry one. Tap it for white or black. Vault of the Archangel. Tap for colorless. For two white and black. Tap. Creatures you control gain. Death touch on lifelink until end of turn. War Room. Tap for colorless. For three. Tap. Pay life equal to the number of colors in your commander's color identity. You get to draw a card. So a bunch of these you could use in uh, any commander deck. We've got Wind Brisk Heights, it's a land with Hideaway 4. So when this land enters the battlefield, look at the top four cards of your library, XL1 face down, and put the rest on the bottom in a random order. It enters the battlefield tapped, tap for white, and for white tap, you may play the XL card without paying its mana cost if you are tapped with three or more creatures this turn. And Starlit Sanctum, it's a land tap for colorless, for white tap, sack a cleric creature, you gain life equal to the Sacrifice Creature's Toughness for black, tap, Sacrifice a Cleric, target player loses life equal to the Sacrifice Creature's power. Tainted Field, tap for colorless for um, tapping. Again, you can get white or black, activate only if you control a Swamp. And of course, we've got some basics here, so Plains. Ten of those, and Swamps. Ten of those. Okay, so the only real change I would make here, you want to get rid of some of those tap lands, they really slow you down. But I do like all these synergies here with the party mechanic in this deck. And of course, a lot of support there for that with the shapeshifters, the changelings. So leave a note in the comments what you think about this deck. We'll be taking a look at the other commander decks from Commander Legends over the next couple of days. So stay tuned. Hope everyone's staying safe and healthy out there. Thanks for watching and have a great day.